what's funny is like, I want everyone to know that YouTubers are human beings. We're awkward, quirky, uncomfortable human beings. We just have cameras. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are so excited to have Jessica Kent back doing an interview with us. But since we've had you on the channel a couple of times, and since we've been on your channel a couple of times, I feel like there's not much that your subscribers and our subscribers, which we have a lot of the same subscribers, let's be real, don't already know. So we came up with a list of really juicy questions that we think you've never shared on YouTube. So I'm so excited. Okay, First good. of all, thank you for having me. Thank you for watching me uh, fight with YouTube equipment for 20 minutes to get this on. Like y'all don't know behind the scenes is so hard. So I've got microphones and lights. I've smashed a light before this. It's I'm a train wreck. They're very patient. <laughs> Same here. Look at us. Like, let's address the elephant in the room with the shared headphones going on <laughs> because all of our YouTube equipment is in New Jersey and we're in Las Vegas right now, but we make do with what we have. Yes, we do. And I also have to send you a microphone. Remind <laughs> me of these things. <laughs> you want to shoot? Well, the great thing is we're, we're still here. We're figuring out a way how to make it work. And even despite all those challenges, I guess the great first question would be, What's the one thing that no matter what's going on, no matter how crazy or hectic or challenging things get, what's the one thing that always makes you laugh? Oh my gosh. Um, my own craziness probably, but that's a close second with Reese because it's funny. He is the most lucky person in the world and I am the complete opposite of that. So like, we'll just be walking down the street. I'll fall, break my toe. Right. We're walking down the street, Reese falls and finds a bag of money. <laughs> Super lucky. And I'm not, and I have, I, it used to make me very mad that I was clumsy or just weird and awkward. And now I think it's hilarious. Like I just have to laugh at myself and I feel like humor and being lighthearted about my own quirks has gotten me really far. Cause I used to be so frustrated and outcasted and weird. And like, no one wanted to talk to me or hang out with me. And now I think that's great. Please don't come over. Like I'm so good on my own. <laughs> I know that I'm weird. I know that I'm going to knock something over at lunch and everyone's going to be pissed. And I think it's hilarious now. So you really just have to laugh at yourself. I think, especially when you first get out of prison or you're dealing with sobriety or any of the challenges that I've personally faced, I've gone into it with humor and, you know, finding a way to make other people around me laugh. I love that too, you know, because I don't know. I just, I feel like humor is the best medicine. I know that sounds super cheesy and cliche, but I think it's true. I don't think it's cheesy or cliche at all. Honestly, I think it's a huge sign of maturity when you can laugh at yourself and your stupid quirks versus getting so insecure and trying to play them off and make up stupid excuses about them. Just get everybody else to laugh with you. Yes. Here. Yeah. We're all weird. Just exactly. Exactly. So what's one of your hidden talents? Oh my gosh. They did not brief me on these questions, <laughs> by the way. Hidden talent. I probably shouldn't say like violence. That's a horrible talent. Um, <laughs> but that's strength. Wow. It's probably, I'm a really good fighter if I get the first punch because it hurts to get your nose broken. So I learned to fight back quickly. Um, but honestly, my hidden talent is, is probably humor, you know, and I'm so serious on YouTube that I don't think people know that about me, but I was like crazy class clown, weird, awkward person. I would like write little skits, like comedy skits. And I love to make people laugh. And a lot of, a lot of times you make people laugh with being stupid. So I am the class clown, the life of the party. And I'm, I'm very like different when I'm talking on YouTube because we're talking about really serious stuff but if something if if I want anyone to know anything about me that I don't share on YouTube it would be that I'm dumb and funny and my hidden talent is making people laugh love it and I think something that the three of us share is that we could be very serious and then very sarcastic that people don't realize we're being funny mm. and then they get it and it's like oh it's like an East coast thing too. Like not yeah. to cry about the West coast, but like New Yorkers, Jersey, like we're funny and we're very quick witted, you know? Yeah. And I've met so many people that are, you know, from our area that are just, they can make you laugh at the drop of a hat, you know, and we move fast. We talk fast. We eat fast. We, you know, we think fast. Yep. Fast. It's a great talent. And 
I love that you're sharing some things that your subscribers probably don't know about you. And that's kind of what we were looking for. One of those things, you know, I got a little insight into this the other night when we spoke, I caught you in the kitchen. I was kind of surprised. Oh my God. You were cooking and you and Reese were in the kitchen and I'm not going to say what you were cooking. I'm not going to give up your secrets, but I want to know what's your favorite food? Not necessarily that you have to cook, just what's your favorite food in general? It's not avocados. <laughs> I think <laughs> <Me> too. <laughs> I, I think, think I, I think they're propaganda. And I think it's weird that like in California, if you order a salad, it's just covered in avocado. Like, so I think Jenna Marble said this first on YouTube, actually, if you go to California and you, you know, a lot of things or a lot of times they have avocados because it's just part of the state. They have tons of them. Right. So they throw them on sandwiches and they throw them on salads in upstate New York. We have a lot of apples, but you don't see people throwing apple all over everything, sandwiches, your salad, like, no. So I feel like avocado has no place on most things. It's like mushy and weird. Um, he was talking earlier about me making vegetables. I, <laughs> I bitch about eating healthy food because I don't want to, I want to eat pasta and carbs and pizza and cheeseburgers. And I love that, but heart disease runs in my family. So I have to not, I have to tone it the F down because if I don't, I'm going to be super unhealthy, which I, I enjoy. Um, so my favorite food is anything Italian, you know, totally oh, cliche, yes. but it's pasta. I love pasta. I happen to know an Italian <laughs> who can cook. So we might can have you make to make your own pasta. I've made my own pasta. I don't enjoy, I'm weird. I don't enjoy pasta, even though I'm Italian. Pizza all day long. Pasta, eh, I could take it or leave it. I've made my own pasta in prison from scratch. Did you steal the flour and egg? How'd, how'd you yes, do that? We did. <laughs> we stole it and spent hours and hours hand making it. Yeah, that's, I it was well it was worth so it. I thought it was so good. I like, oh, it it's was. really worth the time. I want one of those like roller things yeah. so that I can make my own, you yeah. know, I don't want to do it inmate style. I'm too lazy for that. Oh my God. You have to get the kids involved <laughs> and a little crank and all the fun stuff. Yeah. That would be so cute. So what's one fear that you are proud of overcoming? Oh my God. I feel like it's still an ongoing fear of mine actually, but it's flying. So when I, I when I got, I, say that. <laughs> I'm, I started sweating as soon as you asked me, honestly, because I hate it so much that I have panic attacks. So like, I'm not being dramatic. I usually am dramatic, but I'm talking like hyperventilating. I have to calm myself down. I have to be, I try to be wow. regular on a plane, but other people are like, get it together. Um, so when I first got out of prison, we would take road trips and we would go on vacation to Florida or we go to New York and we drove from Arkansas to New York twice. And then when we moved up to here, I'm from, I'm living in the suburbs of Chicago, driving to Florida, we just didn't have the time. We got busier and busier. And finally I had to say to race, like, just book the flight, just book a flight. <laughs> so it's really bad when I put my kids on the plane. Cause now it's like, it's not just me, like my kids are there. And I just, I have such anxiety that I see something bad going, happening 10 years down the road. <laughs> um, but the more that I fly, the better I get, I don't freak people out next to me. Everyone's like, not like I need to move seats, like looking around to see if they could like talk people out of seats because I'm weird, you know? And there are some people on flights that don't want to hear it. They just want you to like sit still and stop acting crazy, but I can't, I'm looking out the window every three seconds. And like, so I'm, it's an ongoing thing, but definitely flying. Well, that's one of the fears that you're still working on and important to do that because those U S air marshals, like you definitely don't want to have a run in with them. <laughs> Is there a story behind so you gotta, this? <laughs> no, you gotta, you gotta keep that fear in check. That's a whole video. Definitely. Definitely. I'm not I'm, really afraid of most things, but traveling is the worst. It's the worst. Well, fear, obviously fear of heights, like that's a natural fear. So totally understandable to be up in a plane. Like that's just not natural, right? I can't comprehend how they just put in the coordinates, like they're Lewis and Clark and they start in one <laughs> spot and land perfectly in another. My brain just can't handle it. It's a lot. It's definitely yeah. a lot. But what's funny is I... I'm starting to watch on YouTube, just 
pilots flying or like flying, uh, landing out of O'Hare. You know, there's tons of videos on YouTube about planes and I'm like trying to watch them and like be normal and it's making it worse. So yeah. I was onto something, you know, I'm like, oh, if I figure out how the plane works and like, I'm not crazy, then it's bad. I'm trying yeah. so hard to like fully overcome it though. All right. Now on I'm the sweating. The spectrum, moving away from those those fears that you have. Now that you have me sweating, yeah, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, let's let's move on. On the opposite end, your signature strength. What's that one thing that you feel like you can do better than anybody else? Break a bone. <laughs> Break a bone. <laughs> Hopefully, someone else's, not your own, right? Goes back arm to bar, anybody. Arm bar. Um, Oh, I see, these do. hidden talents keep coming out. We just keep asking. I loved fighting, like not like in the street. I really don't like getting my face smashed in, but I enjoyed it. I enjoy wrestling, but my school wouldn't let me wrestle with the guys and we didn't have a female wrestling team. So I kind of just learned on my own. But one thing I can do better than anybody. I'm actually, I know I make really gross prison recipes, but I'm actually a really good cook. I feel like I could outcook anybody. And if we ever, if I ever come to Vegas and we do like a prison cook-off, you're going down. Don't even try to come at me what? with mackerel. Don't even, don't even come to the table with that. <laughs> Trust me, I've got secrets. I just told you a little bit about that handmade pasta. We might have to make this happen. Oh, for sure. And I will crush you. <laughs> <laughs> She said the same thing and it didn't. And I did I not crush you? Absolutely not. Oh, please. You made mackerel, you lost. You lost before it, it started. Delicious. Before it was out of the can, he lost. It was it. delicious. Anyway, I kind of feel guilty asking this question because for me, 2020 has been incredible for obvious reasons, but most people want to flush 2020 down the toilet. So what are you most looking forward to in 2021? I think I'm, I think I'm most looking forward to um, 10 years sober. My sobriety always comes first. So I am celebrating nine years sober in two days. So wow, once I hit 10, every day after 10 is more sober time than using time. Yeah. And I never thought that was possible. I never thought I'd go 10 days be, being sober. And I tried for a long time and I stumbled and fell a lot, but 10 years sober next year. And, um, I really am looking forward to collaborating with a lot of great people and not only growing my brand here, but hopefully when the pandemic goes away, I can actually be in prison and talk to people in person, in prison. You know, um, there are a few things that might lead me there right now, but without a shadow of a doubt, getting in front of inmates is like my number one goal. So I'm hoping that somehow that manifests next year. Back to prison without getting arrested, right? Through the front door. Like, yes. That's what I'm talking about. I always love talking to people who did time and then go back in afterwards, like you guys aspire to do, because I'm so curious, like hearing the clicks and the bars and the locks and all that stuff, how that is for you in the moment. Well, there isn't really bars, but like radios and keys yeah. and those things I feel like might trigger me a little bit, but at the same time, I'm not there to talk to the correctional officers. I'm there for the people. I'm there for the inmates. And I feel like if I had somebody that I could have related to in prison, maybe my time would have been different. If they know, like I was here, I did time just like you. I had a baby here. If I could do it, you can do it. You know, we, we constantly see people coming in and out. I would, I was always a short timer and still I saw people get released and come right back. It's like, come on, man, like try harder. I know it's hard, but try harder. And that was always really def like defeating my mentality. You know, I always had self doubt when I saw other people come back right away. So yeah, top priority is to get in there so they can see like, you can do this too, because I did it and I am not special. That's pretty cool because tomorrow I'm actually getting to do that for the first time. Stop. Oh, I'm so excited. Where? In Vegas? In Vegas. I'm going to be part of a training that is going to be for people who are, they've just been released. So they're coming into the headquarters downtown. We're going to do a training with them, but we're also going to do it virtually via Zoom with those in Casa Grande, which is the inside component. So yeah, super I excited come. about that. Well, <laughs> come that's on. why you need to be out here. We need have to, to like, be a part of this. You have to get on a plane to get there though. Now I'm sweating again. What else you got? <laughs> <laughs> this one's easy. If you 
could have any superpower, what would it be and why? I feel like the old me would be like invisibility. Yes. <laughs> so it could be invisible. But you know, Raven from uh, the Marvel thing, she turns into whoever she wants. Okay. I would be Raven. Ooh. And who's the first She's person awesome. that you would turn into? Good question. Oh my gosh. I mean, that depends, you know, it depends on like where I'm going, what I'm doing. You could be anybody. <laughs> not, I'm not breaking the law or anything, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I feel like I'd want to be like a really big person just for once, just one time be a big person. Cause I'm so okay. little, <laughs> I'd want to be Reese just for one day, nice. but I'd be like mean, you know, like, oh, there's a toll in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, um, family guy episode where Stewie has muscles. He's like, Oh, there's a toll. Sorry. <laughs> can't get through. There's a toll in the hall now. 10 bucks. What can I when you were a little girl, what did you want to grow up and be? Or who did you aspire to be like? That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I didn't aspire to be a drug addict. I didn't aspire to be a criminal, but I always rooted for the bad guys in the movies. Um, and I did want to be a journalist. That was my first career, career goal, um, probably because I watched way too much Gilmore Girls. But I, I wanted to be an unembedded journalist with the soldiers in Iraq. So that means that when you go over there, you're not with them under their protection and under their umbrella, but you're on your own. And I remember being really young, wanting to do that, specifically an unembedded journalist because of the psychology behind it. When you're hanging out with people um, and you're becoming friends with people, it's difficult to write objectively, you know? So I really wanted to take on that risk and be an unembedded journalist. Very what cool. a great goal for a little kid. Yeah. That's a 12 awesome. year old. Yeah. So what's so funny is I had at our school library, I would just be reading all these papers, you know, the New York times, Washington post. And I'd had them out on these like tables. One would call them day room tables. Right. And <laughs> I just had them all over. And I was just that super nerd reading the papers. And I saw a woman, a Muslim woman that voted for the first time. And I, I remember this article so clearly her finger was purple because they dipped their hand in purple. And mm -hmm. I, I read the article and I was so excited that she got to vote. And I really just wanted to be over there. And then fast forward years later, I'm doing the same thing with legal books in a New York County jail, books all over the day room studying. Like I've always been so analytical, like a super nerd that will study and study and study until my head falls off. Cool. Very cool. Kind of with that studying, Imagine if we could kind of fast forward that. If we were to take you matrix style, plug in, and we could download any sort of education or skill, and you could just have it instantaneously, what would that program be? You know the movie Limitless? Yes. Like, I just want to be that guy, you know, yes. Limitless. Everything. And, yeah. And what's funny, if you downloaded the files in my brain, it's a big bag of weird up there. Like <laughs> it's full of like psychology knowledge that's super useful and trivia that makes no sense. And like MMA fights and like, it's a big bag of weird. No, oh, that's cool. <laughs> All right. So it's, it's the whole mix you would, you would do. I want to do things fast, efficiently, not get tired, not be drowsy. Like I want to be like the guy from Limitless and like, you know, he was kind of like Goodwill hunting. Yes. But limitless. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> What's your favorite Did I place? answer that question or no? Yeah, yes. that was awesome. What's your favorite place to visit? Florida. It's just, I love the beach. I love it so much. If it's local, then I love going uh, to the Riverwalk downtown Chicago. But for like vacation, because I can't leave the country yet, it's definitely Florida. Okay. So since you can't leave the country, what's the one place that you haven't visited yet? that you really, really want to visit? All of the places. <laughs> All of them? <laughs> I want to go to Canada just because they said I can't and it pisses me off. So I'm like, just let me in. <laughs> like, it's right there, bro. Like just, I, and a lot of my subscribers are in Canada. So I'm like, please just let me go there. Um, it's ridiculous. We're so neighbors. Where are you going? When? when are you going there? Um, I don't know. <laughs> if I can get there on a work thing, like a work, visa maybe okay. they'll let me in so i just have to keep hope but um since i'm like 25 percent italian <laughs> thought it was way more italian than that i just tested my dna um i do want to go to italy cool. top of the list so italy's mm -hmm. probably first and then canada just because they said no and that's stupid 
It's so funny you say that because Adam's PO stopped by the other day and she was like, listen, if you want to leave the state, I need this many days. And if you want to leave the country, I need this many days. And I wanted to throw a temper tantrum because we couldn't leave the country. Not that we have any plans to go anywhere. Hello, coronavirus. But I'm like, man, what? What about our trip to Italy that we've never even planned or talked about? But it's hysterical <laughs> because, you know, they say you can't do something. Of course, it's the first thing you want to do. Absolutely. Yeah. My my friend, Matt, he's actually working on getting all of his felonies removed from all of the states he's been to. Um, he traveled for 17 years on a sales crew. So he's accrued some charges across the land and it's a process. And he's actually won in a couple of states and he's working to be, you know, his have his rights fully restored, but he's left the country. And I'm like, how did you do that? <laughs> you know, so if he did it, I can do it. So I definitely have to start applying for that. Um, I do know that because I'm on a suspended sentence still, and I have exposure time and I'm not like a first time felon, I feel like it's going to be a little bit harder, but you know, just the project for me, make it really difficult, put a million obstacles in my way and I'll figure out a way to get it done. Absolutely. Nice. If you could have any job, what would it be? Well, I'm 31 now, so I don't feel like this applies, but it, Honestly, I love the job that I'm doing. I love being on YouTube. I love sharing my story. It's really something that I'm excited to do. You know, I wake up every morning excited to either um, film a video or work on a video or talk about a video or plan out a video. I love that so much. But um, if I could have any job in the world, I'd probably be a governor because they're pretty badass. <laughs> You could pardon people. I have ulterior motives. So <laughs> you could pardon people. And I feel like a lot of people need to be pardoned. Mm, that's a good one. <laughs> what you said about YouTube though, one of, one of my favorite quotes is the key to finding happiness in life is to find something you love to do so much that you're happy to do it for free. Mm -hmm. Then learn how to do it so well that people are happy to pay you for it. And I feel yeah. like you found that in YouTube and the fact that you're excited every morning when you get up out of bed, like that's it. That's what it's all about. That's so, that's so true that you said that because a lot of people see YouTubers as bougie or you're making a ton of money or like you're rich. You're not, I promise. Um, and I did it. I was so excited to do it when I had a thousand subscribers, 3000 subscribers, Ro and I were collabing around that time. You know, she saw my channel blow up and I, I hope it happens for you guys. I know it will, but I was just as excited with 3000 subscribers as I am with 300,000 subscribers. My energy has not changed and I was making nothing <laughs> at 3000 subscribers, you know, and that's just how I know money is great, but it's not the reason it's not my why. And I feel like money can't be my why oh, wow. because money Money was so important to me back then, back in the day when I would sell drugs, money was my why. And I was freaking miserable. So when I, when I, when I chased after money and money alone, things that come with money, when I bought my friends, because I totally did. And that pretty boy I had 10 years ago, um, I was, I was so miserable. You know, I felt like it was soul sucking and there, there were times where I had tons of money, way more money than I have now. And I was miserable. So I firmly believe that you need to find what you love first and the money will follow, you know, if you're, if you're smart enough about it. It's so funny because I knew you were going to say YouTube. I told Adam last night because the way you talk about it and we feel the same way about getting up and making those videos and editing those videos and all that stuff. And we'll get there eventually. You kind of answered a couple of our questions prior to us even asking them. And that kind of just happened. So do you want to ask the next one? Yeah. Cause you mentioned what your why was and mm -hmm. finding that or thinking before, you know, what your motivation that it was solely money. And so at this stage of your life, what is that key motivation? What is it that gets you not just excited to get out of bed in the morning, but you know, really keeps you pushing, especially when you hit all of those obstacles and challenges. For a long time, I didn't understand why I was so miserable and why my life was so dark and like, why am I going through all these things? Am I just a product of my environment? I did all of this and this is why, you know, all this bad shit happens to me. And I was really super, super negative, right? Well, I have found that sharing all of that darkness makes me so happy because every single day I hear stories of other people that have gone through something and they overcame it, or they look to me for advice, or they're, they trust me enough to share their darkest moments, or they're currently struggling right now. I didn't understand um, 
how much that would mean to me years ago. I didn't know that someone would look to me for advice because me 10 years ago is a completely different person. I'm a train wreck. No one asked me anything, you know, like don't come to me for advice, like dump him. I don't know, you know? So <laughs> I, I was not the person that I am and I'm still growing and learning and becoming a better person every day. I'm definitely not where I want to be yet. I'm, I'm still 10 years away from that. And then in 10 years, I'll be another 10 years away from it and I'll just keep chasing it. Um, but I'm, I'm so grateful that my past has a reason. Like there was a reason I went through those things. There was a reason that all of that bad stuff happened because it's a tool now. And I've changed all of that into something that can inspire others and help others. And there is no greater thing to do on earth for me than to help other people. So yeah, that's 100% my purpose, whether that is on YouTube or in prison or at a rehab or some people that I meet on the street, whatever it is in any way, any venue, it doesn't matter. You know, I feel like I will continuously do that and I, I love every piece of it. Love that. So back to that time in your life for one second, when you were in prison, who did you trust the most and how did that person earn your trust? So I talk a lot about lifers and they're in prison for life because of the worst day of their life, because mm -hmm. of their worst mistake of their life. And when you go to jail and you go to prison and you meet these people, you have to separate the worst day of that person's life from who they are today. And I think a lot of people on the internet don't understand that. Um, but I was friends with murderers which is horrible to say, like, you wouldn't say that in this free world, you know, but I have met some people that, that forever changed my life because of what they went through, you know, and I didn't trust anybody, not a single soul. I wouldn't tell anyone my life story in prison. I wouldn't open up or share. I'm not even like an onion. You can't even peel me at all. I'm like, I don't even... I'm like an apple. Well, I guess you can peel an apple. I don't know, but you could not get at me. Like there was no, I'm going to break down and share my story with you. Even in my most frustrated moments, I internalized a lot of things. But at the end, I met this woman who is strong and fierce and exactly like me in that she was very closed off. And there wasn't a lot of talking to her. We avoided each other for a long time because I walked in her cell and I'm like, fuck, it's a lifer. Like she's going to have rules and she's not going to like how I put my stuff. Like it's her home. Are you laughing? So, <laughs> Cause it's true. He knows it's true. You have rules in a lifer cell and you have to be respectful of their house. And I am clean. I'm a Virgo, whatever, but I already know that like, she's going to come at me and tell me what I can and can't do in her home. And I'm going to have an issue with it because it's prison. Like you're not going to tell me anything. Over the course of about three months that I lived with her, I, it started out of me being like, oh, great, she's back from her job, like, ugh, to she's here and I can talk to her, you know? And I started to get really excited to see her. And at the end, you know, I grew on her, but I feel like even if you went and asked her today, if she liked me, she'd probably be like, oh, she was so stubborn and so difficult. Um but, you know, I could tell that like she really started to like me and I started to love and respect her. She opened up and shared her life with me. And the a conversation that we had stays with me now to this day. And that was years ago. But she told me that I'm one mistake away from living with her forever. You know, you want to you don't want to brush your teeth and spit in the toilet. Maybe stop selling dope. You know, like you don't want to follow these rules, these prison rules. You don't want to spend the rest of your life with me get the hell out of what you're doing. You know, I'm here because of a drug deal gone bad and I shot that man and he died. And that is why I'm here. You, you think that can't happen to you? You're running around hundred pounds with drugs and guns. Are you insane? Like, what do you think is going to happen to you? Are you going to pull the trigger if someone tries to rob you? And I thought about it for a second and I thought, I might, I don't know. I'm not in that situation. And just that hesitation, like made me realize, like, I really, it really was that easy. It, it's that easy when you're running around in the street, acting a fool, like I was acting to spend the rest of your life in prison. And it stayed with me forever. And I trusted her and I told her certain things and no one believed in me until that point. No one thought that I, you know, could get out of prison and stay out of prison and get my daughter. 
but she did. She told me that I could do that. You know, if you're this tough and this stubborn in prison, be that tough and stubborn about staying out of prison, you know, and I will forever remember every conversation I had with her. I love that. Wow. And that is so relatable to us. And I only left earlier because I'm currently living in a life for sale. I know. <laughs> oh. I'm kidding. Thankfully, our they grow cell, on you. <laughs> thankfully, our cell is more than just one room, more than just the bathroom. Because if we had to compete over the bathroom, she'd win. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. And she should. Absolutely. <laughs> Lifers grow on you, though. Yes. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do. I heard you say earlier that, you know, you have in your mind where you want to be 10 years from now. And you anticipate 10 years from now when you get there that there's going to be another 10 year goal. Jump all the way ahead to the end of your life. I don't know if you've ever heard this before. You know, when, when you look at a tombstone, there's three things on there. There's the date you were born. There's the date you died. And there's that little dash in between. And that dash is really what your life has been all about. So what is your dash? What is going to define that? At the end of your life, when you look back, how do you want other people to remember you? I feel like I'm going to steal that and like ask other people. That's a great question. But I'm not prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a big question, right? Mm -hmm. But we've covered a lot. And we're getting pretty much to the end of things here, wrapping it up. So we thought we'd ask a big question and really take you all the way into the future. How many sentences do I get? Mm. Do I just get one? Do I get three words? Like As many words as you need to adequately define, describe where you want to be, how you want Gosh. to be remembered. I really just want to be remembered um, as I'm, I'm not my worst mistake. You know, and I think for a long time, I believed that that's all I was, you know, I'm just a drug addict. I'm just a drug dealer. I'm just this, I'm just that. So I'm so much more than my worst day. And I want it to be something along those lines. Cause I'm sure I have plenty of more mistakes to make. Can't wait to get there. Um, but you know, I think a lot of people, I don't know if I'm like speaking for everyone, but a lot of people, they want to seem as though their life is perfect. We get the highlight reel on Facebook and everyone's posting their best day or like, that's not life, man. <laughs> that's not life. I am an awkward mistake ridden <laughs> weirdo that knocks things over and I'm clumsy. And either I want my headstone to be something hilarious, or I want it to say, you know, that I'm not my worst mistake. Mm -hmm. Love that. I think that could speak to so many people because every single one of us had made really bad mistakes. Some of us got caught and did time for them and others of us did not, but none of us are as bad as our worst mistake. I love that answer. What are you most proud of accomplishing in your life? It's my kids above all else. Like I'm a mother first before anything else. And I'm so proud of my kids. And I know that's like super cheesy, but like they are amazing kids. We actually just had a date night and, um, overnight, which was like, that's rare. It never happens. And I'm like worried, like, Oh, I hope the kids were okay. Like, hope they were good. And I get back and my friend is like, your kids are freaking angels. <laughs> like, how did that even happen? And I'm like, they're not for me. I don't know, bro. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> you guys said the same thing that they're so sweet. They're so polite. Yes. And I'm just so proud of them. They're so kind. Micah helps anyone that she can it's COVID time, but I would see her daily. If, if a little kid fell on a playground, she would rush over and try to help them. You know, like she is so kind and genuine. And those are the things I want to instill in my kids. So I'm most proud of them. Riley's a little mean. So we're working on that one, but <laughs> I'm so proud of them. And I know you're so humble and I've told you this before plenty of times, but you are such a good mother and their personalities and how they are, that is 100% a reflection on you and how you are with them and all of the work that you've poured into them for so, so many years. So you should be really proud of yourself. It's so hard as a mom to be proud of anything that you do because yeah. it's like we're just born with like mom shame. Like we shame ourselves. It's yeah. ridiculous. And then everyone on the internet wants to shame you on top of it. So Oh my gosh. My kid, my kid has purple hair. The comments that I've gotten over purple hair, like, bro, life's too short for boring hair. Chill. Yeah. yeah. 
but yeah, I thank you so much for that. And they're just such good little kids. So I can't wait to see what they do with their lives, but I also want them to stay babies. So My daughters are awesome and totally reinforced that I would like daughters as well. Tough guys always get daughters. It's going to be a girl if you have a baby. Well, we're True. shooting for twins, twins. It's going to be twins, a twins boy and a girl. Loud. Well, That's hard. Know. Twins is no sleep. <laughs> That's our next big challenge. I mean, I, I hope you have twins. I hope. And I can't wait to meet them. Um, one is like one, two is like 20. So you might get one in the mail. Just, just <laughs> you be prepared. It's fine. <laughs> I won't even notice. It'll be fine. To wrap things up, you gave us a lot of insights that I don't think many of your subscribers, hopefully, uh, hopefully they learn some new things about you. I know uh, I appreciate how much that you shared with us. Looking ahead, whether it's the end of this year, 2021, what's the next big thing that you're working on that we don't know about just yet? So I'll give you a couple. Everyone knows, well, everyone should know about my autobiography. I am crushing it with that now because I finally hired an editor to take a little bit of the stress off of me. Nice. Um, so I'm working on my autobiography, but I'm also working on getting a gig to be a consultant for something very big. Um, and they want to use, you know, my experience for this big project that I can't say, and I have to be super weird about it. Um, and I, I'm hoping that I get it because I feel like I'm perfect for this thing that I want so desperately to tell you guys, but it's very exciting. Um, that might get me to Canada, a, eh? um, but I, if I get it, I can't wait to share it with everybody. You know, I had a really good talk with the person that is doing the, the hiring for this thing, this consulting thing <laughs> I get share with you. Um, and I can usually read if, if I'm a good fit for like this team or like these people, or if, you know, if it's uncomfortable or if I'm like, ah, this isn't, this project does not sound like me at all. This is made for me. <laughs> I feel like I have to have it. So I'm hoping that I, I land this gig. I recently reached out to Dopey Podcast and I have an episode on Dopey Podcast. It's so good because I'm in it. <laughs> Kidding. Um, his whole podcast is great. He asked amazing questions. So the interview is so good because he is so good. But I am going to be on something he calls DopeyCon, where it's a virtual meeting thing where everyone that's been on Dopey or everyone that can participate uh, shows up online and we share our crazy stories. And I'm so looking forward to that. Jamie Lee Curtis may or may not be there because she did appear on an episode of Dopey. A lot of great people share their addiction and recovery stories over there. So if you are not listening to the Dopey podcast, you should be. It's amazing because it's raw and it's real. It's just real people sharing their struggles. Uh, Jake Osborne appears on Dopey. Gregory Gordet from Top Chef, who is amazing, my favorite person. I love Top Chef, by the way. Um, he appears on Dopey as well and shares his addiction and recovery story. So it's amazing. And I'm just honored to be part of that. So I can't wait for DopeyCon. It's going to be in like the middle of November, I think. So definitely stay tuned for that. Oh, that's so exciting. I can't wait to listen to it. Is there anything else you want to add before we get going? No, thank you for having me. And I can't wait to come to Vegas. Hopefully it's not that long of a flight. Um, and hopefully if I'm there, I can talk to some inmates. So we've got a lot of exciting things happening. We're definitely, we're going to get you, uh, get you inside while you're here. I think that's it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and spending this time with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I hope everyone enjoyed all of the weird things that we talked about. Um, what's funny is like, I want everyone to know that YouTubers are human beings. We're yeah. awkward, quirky, uncomfortable human beings. So we just have cameras. <laughs>